Welcome back to Economic Outlook. Today I want to continue my discussion of individual linearization models for the world's major oil producers. We'll start with Russia. Much like Canada, I have chosen not to make an individual linearization model for Russia. It possesses some non-traditional reserves, but not in as large a quantity as Canada. The reason for not building a specific model for Russia lies in its inconsistent production history. Russia was the world's largest oil producer until 1980 when production began to dramatically decrease. However, subsequent rebounds have made Russia the world's largest producer alongside Saudi Arabia. It's unfortunate that better URR reserve estimates aren't available for Russia. For similar reasons, I won't present linearization models for Iran, Iraq, or Kuwait. These countries' production histories are too haphazard for meaningful analysis on an individual level. The countries have models similar to Venezuela's, which you see here. Production figures aren't steady, and the resulting logistic curve is not reliable for decision making. In this case, production declined in the 2000s, but we can't answer any of the logical questions, like was this the result of depletion, or was it political action? The answer is ambiguous, and the logistic curve is simply not reliable for decision making. Much like Russia, many OPEC nations present disjointed production histories brought about by political problems or price fluctuations. Nigeria is one such country, but we can construct a more reliable linearization model for reasons that I'll describe. Nigeria's production has stabilized over the past 25 years. Its estimated URR is now more reliable, and the resulting logistic model is useful for directional observation. Nigeria boasts impressive reserves, by far the highest of any African nation. However, its production history hints that future gains may be more difficult to achieve. The model predicts that Nigeria will reach its logistic peak, 50% of its URR extracted, sometime near 2010. This isn't a firm prediction. There are many factors which could delay or hasten a peak. Political tension might reduce output, or new discoveries may yet be made. However, it's reasonable to suspect that if the status quo remains, Nigeria may soon near its peak capacity. And this is a prime example of directional thinking. Nigeria may be at its peak. It would be unwise to use the model to predict specific declines in the next few years. Production and URR estimates are just too imprecise. However, the overall theme of the model is valid for analysts in Nigeria and elsewhere. Understanding the reality of production is especially important for nations like Nigeria, where oil revenues are a central component of state budgets and fund substantial public welfare programs. The United Arab Emirates is another country whose linearization model offers directional guidance rather than specific predictions. The UAE suffers from the same flaws in its production data which plague other OPEC producers who saw their oil output drop precipitously after petroleum prices collapsed during the 1980s oil glut. This decline was compli has complicated the estimation of the UAE's URR. The model shown here assumes that the country has about 41 billion barrels of URR. On the positive side, the UAE boasts modern technology and a stable political environment which facilitate efficient production. However, the oil glut caused significant gaps in production for many years. Today, the UAE appears to be producing above its productive capacity. It is possible that UAE is actually above capacity and will quickly decline. However, it's equally likely that the model underestimates the oil remaining in the ground. If this is the case, the peak in production would be both higher in terms of annual output and farther in the future. Linearization and depletion analysis are critical for countries like the United Arab Emirates, which rely on petroleum as a fundamental part of their economies. The UAE has an impressive history of creative thinking and openness to different ideas and cultures, which has turned the country into a stable business hub for the Middle East. However, oil production still underpins budgeting and planning. The UAE should carefully consider depletion scenarios as it continues to serve a dual role as producer and commerce center. Now that we've talked about the world's other major producers, it's time to discuss the world's largest, Saudi Arabia. 
Saudi Arabia's status as a swing producer has given it a special role in releasing extra supply to help lower prices and control the demand supply balance. Saudi Arabia's status as a swing producer requires special scrutiny, which we'll see here. It's difficult to create an accurate linearization model for Saudi Arabia for several reasons. First, the country regards its oil reserves and production numbers as state secrets. This means it's difficult to find accurate production histories for Saudi Aramco, the state's petroleum company, the nation as a whole, and especially for individual oil fields like Gawar. In an ideal world, production and reserve numbers would be known for planning and depletion modeling purposes. However, it's hard to fault Saudi Arabia for its position since many other oil producers have the same policy and Saudi Arabia is in a strong competitive position being the world's only swing producer. I think it's unfair to criticize Saudi Arabia alone for not having public reserve numbers when many other countries don't provide them either. Transparency only works if everyone participates. So again, I think it's unfair when people criticize Saudi Arabia specifically for a problem that's endemic to many other oil producing nations. A second problem with constructing a linearization model for Saudi Arabia rests in its production history. On the positive side, Saudi Arabia is the unquestioned world leader in oil field exploration and extraction technologies. The sheer scale of Saudi Arabia's oil operations are a testament to the engineering skill and technical acumen possessed by Saudi Aramco's professionals. To help put Saudi Arabia's technical capacity into perspective, more than half of its oil is found in just eight major oil fields, while many of these fields are subdivided into smaller production areas. The density of production is in direct contrast to a country like the United States, which employed a high of 4,530 rigs in 1981. Saudi Arabia's technology is important to consider for linearization. Whereas other countries might produce less than their theoretical capacity and thus lower the estimated URR, Saudi Arabia has the best extraction technology in the world. If this technology were the only factor affecting production data, Saudi Arabia's figures would be more reliable than they are in reality. Saudi Arabia has shown the same production patterns as other OPEC members punctuated by a sharp decline after the oil glut in 1980. An additional problem is that even though Saudi Arabia has the best extraction technology, it does not always produce oil at full capacity. Because it is a swing producer, Saudi Arabia does not always generate as much oil as it can. This means that URR estimates may underrepresent the oil in place. Despite these shortcomings, Saudi Arabia is too important to it not at least attempt to create a linearization model. The main caveat is that the implicit assumptions behind the model, steady and full production, are less reliable. Therefore, the analysis here should be used for directional purposes only. According to the model, Saudi Arabia has produced almost exactly half of its estimated 216 billion barrels of oil. In absolute terms, Saudi Arabia's production peaked at the height of the oil glut in 1980. However, global demand has brought production levels back to over 90% of its peak. The logistic model estimates that Saudi Arabia is currently near its logistic peak production. And the question remains, is the URR estimate that builds the model accurate? One way to help answer this question is to examine one of Saudi Arabia's most important oil fields, Gawar. In my next entry here on Economic Outlook, I will examine this critical oil field and then move on to a final analysis of global oil production. I'll see you next time, and as always, thank you for watching.